the prime objective of our department really is to inspire, empower, um, and really assist campus leaders and young audiences and allowing them to stand up as proud Zionists um, and giving them the tools to effectively defend Israel in the most critical spaces. And um, I'm sure all of you out there know just as well as anyone how difficult um, being a Zionist student and a pro-Israel student can be on college campuses in America in 2020. So we're here to provide that support network and the infrastructure to give the students a sense of community um, and really to make sure they don't feel alone. So we're really there from them um, on every campus all across the country, however we can help. Um, and just to kind of give a quick overview also about the programs that we run, ZUA runs a range of different initiatives um, ranging from hosting events and grants. We co-sponsor and sponsor numerous guest speakers, experts in their field, whether um, they're journalists, policy experts, um, security officials, and we provide them an opportunity to speak to audiences on college campuses, which really makes an impact. Um, we also do a range of different events, interactive programs um, that you'll hear more about, interactive tabling events um, that really reach a wide audience. We also do uh, different programs just to help support Jewish life on campus too, um, co-sponsoring Shabbat dinners with Chabad and Hillel, um, as well as for other holidays, Chagim, and really stressing the importance, um, as Marlene mentioned too, that uh, as the Jewish people, we're one people. Um, and it's important to know that Israel is an integral part of Jewish identity. Um, and that goes back just from learning about um, the history and the roots of, of our culture, our religion, and how it's all intertwined. Um, so that's such a big part of the work that we do, really allowing and making sure that the students are, are given the proper tools and also the resources to learn more. Um, we also offer an annual fellowship program, which is an incredible opportunity, which Aura will discuss uh, just in a little bit. But perhaps um, our, our biggest initiative really, our probably flagship initiative is the ZOA Student Leadership Mission to Israel, um, which is a trip we run twice a year, every winter break and every summer break. It's open to all students, it's highly subsidized, and it I, I can't really um, adequately just describe it because it's, it's an incredible experience. Uh, students have the opportunity to travel extensively throughout Israel and all over Judea and Samaria, learning about the history of um, the modern state of Israel, and of course, going back to our, our more ancient roots that are really indelible, um, learning about the geostrategic, geopolitical complexities that exist there, seeing that firsthand um, up front and on the ground, and also getting a chance to explore like the different social dynamics. So for us, providing this uh, experience and opportunity to students, um, both Jewish students and non-Jewish students, to see Israel directly, um, you can't pinpoint just um, how valuable that experience it is. So for us, that's really, I, I think, the highlight of all of the work that we do. Um, and of course, the direct campus work on the ground as well. But um, all of it comes together and we've built up a very, very wide network um, of ZOA students and TRIP alumni and past fellows and students who really stay connected with us. And that was really exemplified just by um, our most recent APAC that happened um, almost a month ago. And we hosted a very, very large ZOA reception, which also tied into our work for the World Zionist Congress. And I just wanna send a big thank you again to all of our staff here in the campus department and everyone at ZOA for putting in such hard work and making sure that um, that all paid off. So we're really proud and very happy about that. And I just can't say thank you enough too. Um, so I'm gonna shift it over to Orr. He will share a little bit more about his direct work and then each coordinator will have a chance to speak about their regions. Um, but before doing that, I will also say a little bit quickly, um, I'm based in Austin in New England and I work with college campuses here. Um, it certainly is a challenging region. Um, I'll give one example, even though we have a really strong network um, all throughout where we work with students ranging from college campuses like Brandeis, um, Northeastern, Boston University, UMass Amherst, Harvard. Um, within the past year, I, I'd say that things have really even become a little bit more amplified. UMass Amherst in particular has become really a hotbed of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Um, as well, where they've hosted large-scale events featuring speakers like uh, Linda Sarsour, Roger Waters, Mark Lamont Hill, 
So we are working in partnership with Israel Fellows at Hillel. We're working with staff um, all throughout the different organizations on campus to partner together um, through Chabad is another integral partner of ours. Um, and through our students who are there on the ground, both in independent student groups and student groups who might be working um, with those different in institutions. So we're really right there doing our best to support them and making sure, as I mentioned before, that they do not feel alone. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly is a challenging region. I know New England is not the exception because um, frankly, there are so many areas of the country where we're putting in hard work, defending Israel and making sure that our voices are heard. Um, and if we weren't doing that work, I, I, I don't really want to imagine what it would be like. So we're, we're also thankful for our allies, but I really think ZOA occupies and um, maintains a really important presence within the pro-Israel community. Because when it comes to Zionism, I think more than anything, ZOA represents the true and authentic spirit where we're not afraid and we're not ashamed to identify as Zionists and proud Zionists. That, that's our core identity and what we're all about. And us being able to empower students to feel the same is what makes uh, our work really rewarding in the most uh, accurate sense of it. So um, we're very, very proud of that. And we look forward to continue doing hard work um, no matter where we have to and under any circumstance. So thank you so much. Um, after this, we'll also open it up for a Q&A in a little bit. So if you do have any questions about specific campuses or anything related to what's happening, um, related to BDS or anything that might be on your mind, please feel free to put your question in the question box and we'll be happy to answer as many of those as we can. Um, and just to provide a last update as well, um, uh, relating to the COVID-19 uh, current situation, the majority of campuses throughout the country, especially here in the Northeast um, and in most of our regions, all shut down about a week ago. Um, it was a gradual process. First, I can just speak from my experience here in New England. Uh, schools such as Harvard and MIT um, made students uh, move out from their dorms, which at the time seemed a little bit unexpected for many of them, but um, in retrospect, it was absolutely the right decision. Um, unfortunately, now um, all, all in-person classes have been canceled. Everything is shifted to online, and that's how all of the classes, all of the institutions here are going to be finishing the semester. Harvard, unfortunately, also made the decision to cancel their commencement, uh, which is something that was is really unprecedented too and uh, is occurring and likely will be announced soon at more campuses. So all of the work that we're doing, all the communication with students has really shifted um, to the virtual realm. Um, but in a sense, it, it's not entirely new for us at all because we do work so exclusively with um, students connecting via Instagram and Facebook and through the different mediums that we communicate with them with. So as much as we miss seeing them in person, we miss being on the ground, we, we can't wait for this to end. Um, but in the meantime, we're still very much connected with them and everything that's happening. So thank you, I will shift it over to Or. Thanks guys. And once again, if you have questions, just write them into that uh, question in the sidebar, the, uh, the tab there. Um, really looking forward to seeing what you want to know. So I'll just talk about some of the other initiatives that ZOA Campus does around the country. Um, I can't really emphasize our, our grants enough during the year. That's a lot of what we're able to provide for students in terms of shaping our impact to that specific campus. The students really lead the way in that and we're there to provide that support and provide that those resources, that guidance, uh, what works on other campuses. Um, and a lot of that's done through our fellowship program. So we have over 40 fellows around the country. Um, and each of those fellows is gonna end up over the course of the year doing 10 events or tablings in some way, making an impact 10 times throughout the course of two semesters. And these students are all people, like I know they would be doing this work anyway. And so it's very meaningful to be able to just compensate them for all that time and effort and grief that they're gonna take. Um, Shifting a little bit more to my region, like I have, I work with students, we've had students on our trip, we've had fellows who, the kind of harassment that they face, a lot of it is gonna be actually you know, online like this, you know, um, not exactly, but you know, doxing, exposing information, trying to ruin people's reputations for employers. Some of those uh, issues are right in my region. Um, and 
that's definitely some of the more extreme um, when we have more extreme anti-Israel people who take it that far. Um, but more often, it's you know the, the smaller things on the, the edge. You know, not saying that you know we're not gonna we're not gonna cater a case off dinner in a way that comports with all of the students in the room. Um, those are the kind of things that we can provide resources to pressure the administration, pressure whatever organization is is doing that kind of action. Um, and so that's a lot of the good work that I feel like we've been able to do in my region specifically, especially with students at George Mason. You've had students reach out for that kind of support from uh, Virginia Military College. So like, it's it's a pretty wide range of schools that we were working with. A lot of the schools in my region are particularly politicized. Um, and so that hampers a lot of the kind of events that we can do because people are in a very politically correct culture and aren't really willing to have a lot of the really necessary but deeper conversations that we're trying to work towards. Um, and that's where a lot of our other events like advocacy training and educational seminars, those really start to mean a lot because you get a group of people who are all willing to have those those deeper conversations. Um, and that's some of the best events that we do. Um, unfortunately, a lot of events that we had planned, you know, for Yomazi Garoni, Yomaz Mood, a lot of those are being canceled and there's just not a good way to recreate them in the virtual sphere yet. Um, but I think that's that's the work that I do mostly in my region. I would say that's what makes it a little bit different. It's just the political nature of it all. A lot of students are turning on the hill or, you know, lining up to be congressional aides or campaigners. Like they are really worried about about image and um, partisanship, a lot of those issues. Um, but I look forward to hearing your questions and I'll pass it over to Doug to talk about the Midwest and the West Coast.